Coming out, guys, we're, uh, we're excited. It was, uh, was day one for us, uh, first official day of practice. Uh, you know, so the guys had a lot of juice uh, to, to what they did today and how, uh, you know, how we played. Uh, we had good, good energy today, as you would expect from uh, the first day. But we've had a, you know, a pretty long summer, and I think it's, uh, it's been extremely helpful with, uh, you know, with nine new players to, to do the foreign trip. That was a real positive. We got the ex extra practice time. So I think we're far ahead of where we normally would be at this time of year. Uh, not unusual. There's a couple of guys that are, have some minor stuff going on that, that we're not participating today. But um, overall, I think that it was a great start. Good first step today. I know, Bobby, your, your last couple of seasons uh, have been your best defensive season since you arrived in Tempe. Uh, maybe it's a little too early in the process, but how do you see this uh, team makeup uh, in terms of the defense? Defensively, good uh, athleticism on the perimeter, you know, good length on the perimeter. Uh, you know, Jemiah Neal and Frankie have been very good uh, defensively. Uh, you know, Malachi Davis, uh, Braylon Green, uh, Adam Miller is kind of a seasoned player. So we got some guys on the perimeter that could defend and around the basket. Uh, Sean Phillips has been a real difference maker. So, uh, Seven feet with a seven to five wingspan really goes after shots. Got a plays with an edge to him, uh, and then you know Alonzo Gaffney. So those two together, you know, have uh, have really good length uh, and shot blocking ability. So I think the defense uh, has has pretty good potential, you know, for us to to be very active and uh, you know create some turnovers. What's your sense of where you're at with the shooting ability, especially the newcomers that you added? Yeah, I think uh, you know Adam has has been very good in that area. He's he's a shot maker. He could, you know, you could get him the ball a lot of ways, scoring off the dribble, uh, coming off screens. Uh, you know, Kamari Lands is a very good offensive player. You know, he's uh, got a good body, six seven, and he's got some substance to him. He could, uh, you know, he could face up and shoot it, uh, catch and shoot. He could put on the floor a little bit. Uh, got some stuff back to the basket that I like. So. I think he's a, a guy that potentially of the of the new players that uh, could be a guy to put some points on the board. But uh, yeah, Bryson Long is another guy that we brought in that that could really shoot it and stretch the court. So uh, Jemiah and Frankie have worked very hard on on that uh, as uh, as Alonzo has. Coach, you mentioned Alonzo and Frankie um, and Jemiah, just you know, with the transfer portal and everything, and some players leaving. Just what does it mean that those guys decided to stick around and you know? Be bought into what you, what you've got going here. Yeah, those guys are the anchors uh, of kind of what we're doing. They've been uh, vocally, they've been excellent. You know, in our workouts, just uh, reinforcing messaging. You know, to the new players of how how we operate, and uh, they've been great. You know, they've been great leaders uh, for us uh, on and off the court. And uh, you know, they've all taken steps. I think uh, they know what you know playing winning basketball looks like uh, coming off a 23 win season and. I think they're hungry to want to do more, and uh, this is the last season of the Pac-12, and we talked about that, and just you know, what are we going to do this year? You know, with this being the last year, how are we going to attack this season and, uh, and and make the most out of it? Uh, it's our last chance to win anything, you know, uh, in the Pac-12 for for Arizona State basketball. I don't see you know any banners, uh, you know, in our arena, so. Uh, Hopefully that's, uh, I think that's how the guys have been thinking. They've been kind of following that, that away uh, in the back of their minds. Coach, I know you mentioned obviously the trip uh, to your, but with the way the transfer portal is bringing in you guys year after year, a trip like that is, is obviously big, but how does it how does it help you in recruiting and even like translate to their play on the court? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, the bonding stuff was great. The, the time the guys spent, you could see them off the court just organically spending time together and laughing and having a good time. And so that was, that part of it was excellent, particularly with so many new players. Um, the games were great to get a glimpse of looking at different combinations. And uh, we didn't have our full complement of players. We, you know, Bryant had a visa issue. He's a Canadian and, uh, you know, Zane Meeks was, uh, had a minor injury that, that he couldn't play. So, you know, we didn't even have really our full front court, but you saw, you know, a lot of potential with the team playing against a couple of pro teams over there. And I'm, you're not always sure what that competition is really like. And you kind of, they're maybe throwing some guys together. But I, I thought, you know, I saw that, you know, this team had a, had speed and aggression and things that, that we look for, uh, you know, when we're recruiting. So I, I, I kind of like the group uh, from what we did over there. How do you assess the tenacity or the hunger of this group? Um, I mean, I think they've been very solid. Like, like any team that I've had, we've had some days where, you know, we had to really get after them and, 
and teach them that certain days aren't un, are unacceptable, that we can't have bad days on the court where we, we lose a day to our competition. I think, uh, you know, I brought up, you know, Texas Southern and, and San Francisco as kind of examples when you show up and you're not ready to play and, and how that can impact, you know, your season. You know, I, mean, I, I think, what if I didn't have to go and play in Dayton, how good we might have been in the first round of the NCAA tournament instead of having to go that route. So the more positive days we could have, I think the better. And that's, you know, I'm putting a lot of responsibility on, on Jemaya and, and Frankie and Zoe as juniors and, and one senior to really emphasize that and have our guys like ready to play every day. Where have you seen Jemaya take off? Because obviously at the end of the year when he got more playing time, he just really took off. And is he still kind of on the same trajectory? Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he built off of last year at the end, and he was he was uh, he was cut out to do better early. He just he had the setback with the injury, and that put him behind some guys. We had some other guys playing really well up in New York, and he got caught in a numbers game, and he had a breakout at the end. We had some injuries down the stretch, and he took full advantage of it and played great basketball. And you know, Jemiah's never really lacked confidence. I'm sure you'll notice that when you talk to him, but. Uh, he believes in himself, uh, he, and he's he's backing it up, man. He's one of our best workers. He's getting in the gym on his own, and he's putting the time in. So I think he's really focused on on trying to have a really good year. How unique of a skill set does Sean Phillips have in the, the bigs that you've had over the years? Sean is is the most gifted uh, front court guy that I've had. Just uh, just naturally gifted. I mean, his story is amazing. What he's been through, and what he's uh, you know getting to this point. Uh, but he's got tremendous upside, and, and it's not gonna. You may not see it on the floor every night. He's still, he's still a work in progress. He's very young. He's our youngest player on our team, even though he's a sophomore. He's uh, he's 19 years old. But it, I mean, he's just got great feet and good hands and touch, and he's so explosive. He's got a seven-five wingspan. And, you know, he's got a little bit of like I touched on earlier, just a nasty edge. You know, he's going to make some mistakes, and he's still learning how to play, but he's, he's got a great future in front of him. Have you heard anything about Adam Miller's situation, the waiver, and where you are with him? No, we have not, and we're going to, uh, we're working on that, and, and that should be, you know, executed shortly, and then uh, and then we should know uh, when the NCAA does decide on it. How about you, personally? Were you able to get away for the summer at all? It was, yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of a normal summer for me. I find my pockets of when I can escape for a few days, uh, you know, I, I went away a little bit in May uh, before the portal closed, and, I, and from now on, I'm going to make sure I wait until the portal officially closes before I go anywhere, because I, I was driving my wife crazy, just, you know, uh, wondering, is there, is there any shoe that's going to drop while I'm not around? So uh, that would be the one adjustment I'll make to uh, any future travel uh, in, in the summer. But uh, yeah, it was a great summer, and uh, it's been it's been refreshing really to come off a year where you feel like you, you've taken steps in the right direction again and you feel rejuvenated and then you, know, you have these new guys to work with so it's always you know as a coach really really cool or are some of the finer details that you're working with Frankie on at this point well I think Frankie's got to show great vocal leadership he and I have to be connected um, he has to be unbreakable you know at the point guard position man you got to be you know, you got to be the heart and soul of the team. You got to fight. You know, if, if if you're struggling a little bit on offense, man, you got to figure out a way to, to to will our team to win at that position and trying to continue to reinforce you know that communication with him. Put a lot of he's put a lot of work in on a shot, so he's got to trust that and shoot it shoot it with confidence. And uh, so hopefully that'll be the next step for him, just proving that you know he could step in and and, and make those kind of shots from distance. You guys have hung your hat on chemistry and toughness. Do you think it's going to be the calling card again this year? Um, it's We're still figuring our identity out. I'm not even sure yet if we're better on offense or defense. You know, We're going to be finding out over the next several weeks. And uh, as we go to the scrimmaging segments, uh, I like our balance. I think we got a, a number of guys that could really help us win. Um, I like our potential on defense with our activity and our athleticism and length. So they're... You know, some positives, on, you know, both offensively and defensively. Coach, uh, comparing this year's team to last year's team, you guys once again have a lot of newcomers. So how would you say, like, at this point last year compared to now with the tournament last year and that summer trip, do you think that you're further along than you were at this point last year? Well, I think the foreign trip has closed the gap in that area. Um, 
with the portal last year, we brought in a, a touch more of experienced players that were older, that had played a lot of games in college basketball. There are some, some of the guys we have a great upside, like I touched on Sean Phillips, uh, Kamari Lands, uh, junior college player Malachi Davis. They're the transfers we brought in. I think they, they have something to prove, you know, particularly Kamari and Sean coming from, you know, uh, losing environments. You know, now you know, they got to come in here and, and, and help us win basketball games. So they still, you know, kind of have to have to prove that. But, you know, I, I do like our, our strategy in, in the portal and, and, and how we put together the roster right now. What was your favorite part of the Europe trip? Um, I, I would say the end of it. Uh, Mykonos is, is one of my favorite places in the world. It's been... Uh, to visit there and we, we stayed at a beautiful uh, resort and there was no basketball and the players, we all went to the beach and you know they had a blast. It was one of the most beautiful places that I've been to and uh, so that was no, uh, easily probably the best part of it. I know it's not on your mind right now probably, but you mentioned the last year of the Pac-12. Any thoughts about just uh, moving to the Big 12 in the future and the juggernaut of the league that is? Yeah, I mean, it gets you excited if you're a competitor. If you want to you know, play weak competition, and not to say that the Pac-12 is that, because I think top to bottom this year, it could be as good as it's been since COVID stopped the, the season years back. I think some of the lower tier teams have gotten uh, considerably better, and you can change your fortunes quicker with the transfer portal now and mm -hmm. NIL and things. So I, I think it's going to be a very competitive year. But yeah, I mean, we're, there's some heavy lifting ahead of us, you know, in the future in terms of competing with, with those type of programs uh, and uh, and the resources that they have and uh, and the brands that they are. I mean, you're talking about having, you know, Baylor and, and Kansas uh, and Arizona year in and year out, like three kind of top 10 teams that are in your league. And they were, uh, Big 12 was outstanding last year for uh, in terms of uh, NCAA tournament and having a chance to play TCU in the first four minutes. I started to see how big and athletic they were and you know we kind of settled down in that game and, and we were fine but it's uh yeah it's, it's something you know in, in the back of our mind again that we're, we're excited about as an ACC guy dating back you know um just what do you make of Stanford and Cal going to the ACC I mean I'm happy for them because a big part of me you know we've had battles with all these programs and you want to see them land in a, in a, in a solid ground in some way and make sure they're in a in a good competitive environment is, uh, you know, we're uh, at the end of the day, there is a fraternity with the coaches and we compete against each other, but you don't want to see um, any of those, those places uh, be at a serious disadvantage or in a bad situation. So I'm happy that they're, they're in the ACC. With your staffing hires, um, what, were, what was your goal when hiring them? And do you feel like you filled that void or do you think there's still a little bit more work to do on that? Yeah, we're still working to get the entire staff here. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like it. You know, we uh, we bumped up Nick Urban and Nick has uh, got great energy. He was, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to say it's they're exactly the same, but, you know, I, I coached with Nate Oates at Buffalo. He was my assistant. He was a high school coach from uh, Detroit that I brought in to, to help me with that program. And he's his career has taken off at Alabama. Nick it was a longtime high school coach in Chicago. And then, and I think he brings a lot to the table with you know how he coaches and supporting what I what myself and Coach Kimbrough are doing. Uh, Greg Lansing has been a head coach for a number of years at Indiana State, very experienced uh, as a special assistant. I think he'll he'll do an outstanding job. And then you know, I brought in uh, Mickey Mitchell, that is a former player, and Mickey was here last year, and he's he's moved up in his responsibilities. But he's a guy that's seen what good teams look like. Uh, again, knows. Uh, you know how the program uh, operates at a high level and, and is younger too. We got to keep making sure that we have young, uh, young people in the program that could develop and grow as coaches and also like relate to our players. So I, I like the balance between experience and youth that we have on our coaching staff. Coach Early over here, um, you had a four, four uh, 20, uh, 20 plus win seasons for your time here at Arizona State. How do you hope to do the same and maybe even improve uh, for this year as this year is the final year of the Pac-12? Yeah, I just, you, you're never satisfied and that's, you're, you're never content with anything that you're doing. You know, we had a great season last year. How do we take further steps and, and get better? And, uh, you know, going to the NCAA tournament is great, you know, and, and it's very difficult. And I, I think last year I might've talked about all the blue chip programs that didn't, weren't even good enough to make it to the NCAA tournament. So 
uh, you have to take pride in that, but at the same time, you know, we want to try and, and compete for championships and win games in the NCAA tournament and, and do more. And that's uh, so that's kind of the goal for us. Yeah, and you kind of you might have heard this plenty of times, but you know, you've obviously had experience in the NCAA tournament as your time as a Blue Devil. Um, what advice have you given your players uh, for them to reach that goal and finally uh, bring the chip home to ASU? Well, I mean, it's it's uh, the season matters. Just uh, staying in the moment and getting better every day, and you know, on the practice court, and then uh, and then certainly, you know, you got to put together a resume. You know, we uh, I got my fingers crossed that the Pac-12 will be evaluated and rated uh, as one of the better leagues, so that we get more representation in the NCAA tournament, and that uh, it, it, we're a respected league this year. We got to you know, all the programs got to do their part and hopefully win in some key non-conference games, and then and then just get to work in the league to compete and put together the best season we can. And if you do that, then, you know, when, when the ball goes up, wherever you're going to be in the NCAA tournament, you, you got a great opportunity in front of you and you got to take advantage of it. How do you feel about this non-conference schedule and how you're preparing for conference play? I like it. I think it's challenging. I think we, uh, you know, we, we put together uh, some very good neutral site games, uh, you know, two in Vegas versus uh, BYU and, and uh and either NC State or Vanderbilt, and we got TCU and Dallas on, on a neutral, which is again a rematch of our NCAA tournament game last year. Between those two programs, we have uh, Northwestern here on a neutral, uh, and then starting the season, there I don't know how many teams are starting any more difficult than we are. We're playing you know, Mississippi State's one of the best defensive teams in the country uh, in Chicago. So a lot of high-profile games, uh, and, and then you know some solid uh, games here at home. So. Um, uh, I think it's got a good balance of what we're looking for. A couple more questions, then we'll bring the guys in. Um, last year, there was, there was a lot of close games. Um, just um, a couple of issues, just closing, closing it out. Um, over the offseason, what are some things that you've seen from the guys that maybe you know someone is stepping up that could possibly be your closer? Or just who do you think could really lead you to closing out those really tight games? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, those games come down to very fractional margins of winning and losing, and you hope that you know, you, you you have your playmakers are prepared to step up in those moments that you put them in the right positions to be successful. That, you know, we talk a lot about our conditioning and our fitness and how hard we work. So we, you know, we want to be, uh, you know, the, the most well conditioned team. So in the last, you know, five minutes of the game, we could we could figure out a way to, to reach deeper and to have more in the tank and, and close those games out. And I think historically we've, we've done a pretty good job in, in games of five or less. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that shook out last year, but you know we, we talk about it. We'll do game situations quite a bit here um, over the next several weeks to to give those guys those opportunities to uh, to figure out how to win in the late stages of the game. One more question, anybody? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.